Coordinate transformations are a fairly common problem in physics and engineering and astronomy. So we're going to look at how to the derivation right here, how to get them with trigonometry. So we have a point here, P defined off of the X and the Y axis. And we want to figure out where it is in relationship to this new coordinate axis. So this is a known value, the distance from here to about here, that's our x value, this distance. And if we draw a line straight down from the point, distance from here to here, that's our y value. It's the same as this distance from here to here. And so we want to find our new distance. If we went straight up from x, the distance from here to here, that'll be our y value, and the distance from here to here, that'll be our x prime value. I meant to say y prime value earlier. So first thing, let's look at this trigonometrically. This line is 90 degrees. We defined it to be 90 degrees because it's perpendicular to the primed axis. And this angle is the same as this angle. These two angles are the same because whenever we just have two angles, we're gonna know that this angle is gonna be the same as this as long as the lines are straight. And this angle is gonna be the same as this angle. Because of that, we know that this is also theta. Inside we have theta, 90 degrees, arbitrary angle, same thing on this side. Theta, 90 degrees, arbitrary angle. They both sum up to 180, and that's gonna be useful in a second. So to do this, we wanna construct a little rectangle, not a square, although it could be a square in some circumstances. And we want to get this distance first. So this value here, our known x value, because the distance from here to here, this is x. And we know that. We're going to use that to find x prime. If we do the cosine of theta times our x value, so the when you do cosine or sine times the hypotenuse, you're finding some leg of this triangle. When you're doing the cosine, you're finding the adjacent leg. When you're finding the sine, it's the opposite leg. So we're finding the adjacent leg, and we know the hypotenuse. It's the x value. So x times the cosine of theta, that's going to give us this leg, this distance. But we want to find this distance, the total distance. To do that, we need to find the other leg which is going to be a function, which is going to be, let's finish drawing this little rectangle. It's going to be a function of the y value. So we go look at this triangle. Okay, this is our known value. This is y. The distance from here to here is y. And we want to know this part, the opposite. So we will use a sine function to get the opposite leg of that. So our known value, y, times the sine of theta, because again, this is also theta. That'll give us this leg, this leg of this big triangle. We add this together with this, which we both found individually. We're going to get the total length, or our x prime value. It's the same thing here with our y prime value. We're going to use this same triangle. Find the big length here. So from here all the way to here, that is going to be the cosine of theta times our y value y is still our hypotenuse here. We're going to subtract off this little portion here. Well, what is this? This length is the same as this length, and we can use this triangle to find that portion. And this is simply x times the cosine of theta. I said cosine, I meant sine. Again, again, we know our hypotenuse here, and we're finding this leg. 
So multiply the sine of the theta to get this length times the hypotenuse. And so this is usually rearranged to make it look a little bit nicer. Start with the x's. And x is usually written before the cosine function. It doesn't matter mathematically, it just looks nicer. And the same thing here, minus x times the sine of theta plus y times cosine of theta. And that is how to rotate it about a in a positive direction. So what if you want to do the negative directions? You could redo this whole trigonometric derivation, except rotate about the negative direction in this direction. Also, if you just look at this, you recognize that cosines are even functions. Just put in a negative value for theta. The cosines aren't going to change. Put in a negative value for sines, and the sines of these things will switch. And so if you want to rotate it about the opposite direction, want to keep that, it's going to look like this because the signs will switch because they're um, odd functions. All right, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it.